talk about user access and login access and how to set those rules up. What I've got here is a user directory connector for iPortal. This is something that I've talked about many, many times. Uh, you could find this out on ClickBranch if you just search for iPortal. It's a great way uh, to kind of set up a mock system of users so that you can test security rules uh, for things like this for user access. And so I've got this set up. Notice that I do not have this box checked, which means that when I sync that directory, I get all of the users and all of the properties about them for all users. Because I'm using this iPortal, it's just basically a little Excel sheet right now um, that has that information. So let's go ahead and see what happens then after it's synced. I've got users like this, Abacus, Birth of Babies, Candy, Striper, these are names that I've customized. The out-of-the-box version comes with more of a standard set. And what I can do then is I can have this screen that comes with the app that comes up. It shows the picture of the users, and it shows them trying to access things. Um, what it lets you do is simulate logging in. So I can click on the hub, and it's going to take me to this. And it all appears to be working. If I try to actually execute anything or I try to build something new, you're going to see I get this, hey, you can't do this because you've got no access. In order to grant the access, that's what we're going to be looking at here. So now i got to figure out who Six Sigma is and what type of access I want for him or that type of a user. And so I'm going to come back to my management console. And I'm going to go to where I have licenses and tokens. I can I could do one of two things. I could add a person in here manually. I could manually now say, oh, I want Six Sigma to get there. But we want to set up something that's going to be a little bit more flexible. We don't want to have to grant access one user at a time after they call us and tell us, oh, I'm not allowed to get in. Um, what I can do is I can either grant a user access rule that would give him a full token usage, or I could grant a login access rule. Um, so let's go back and take a look at these. Um, six <coughs> in this environment is kind of a uh, important person as Rev RevyCycle would be. They've got access to the QMC as well as the hub. All the other users just have hub access, and I've got basically some clinical users and some financial users. And so let me come back into the hub. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say that for six, what I want to do is I want to grant him user access. Only I don't want to do that um, but for him as a user. I want to say anybody who's a ClickView developer would have a user access pass. And so all I have to do is apply, and that's basically saying anybody who's in the group, click developer, um, would be allowed to get a user access pass instead. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create some rules for my other users. When I create a rule for this, like I want finance users, to be able to get in, I can say, well, how many of my tokens that are available am I going to grant authorization to? In this case, I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to share 10 tokens for those that are in the finance department. And again, it's going to say, well, who is this rule for? Well, I'm not going to, I'm going to pick group again. And this time I'm going to say, those that are in the finance group, get to share these 10 tokens as login access. And so I can create that, and I'm going to create another one for clinical. In this case, I know I'm going to have probably a lot more clinical users, so I'm going to share 50 of my tokens among those clinical users. And I'm going to pick the group clinical this time instead. And so let me apply that. And if I come back to these, I can see what these rules are. Um, so I could go in. Hey, there are none that have been used. And basically, I've got 500 login accesses to go because it's times 10. So this one had 10 times 10 is 100 to go. 
If I look at my usage summary, I'm not using any of these. You can see here these quarantine because this is where I've tried this in the past. I've reset everything with security, but it says, hey, there were two of them that were used. So now we're going to go ahead and test these out. I'm going to come back over here to six again this time. And this time I'm going to say, yes, I'm trying to build a new app. And what I hope now is that because six is in that click developers group, he will be given a user access pass in order to get into the system. And it will grant me access this time. And I could open the app and work away on it as you would expect. I'm going to come back to here and I'm going to log in as Penny Sillen, who is a clinical user. And Penny can come in here and she should be able to access these apps as a clinical user. And if I come back out of here, I'm going to go ahead and log in as Abicus, who's our VP of accounting. And she can get into apps. In this case, she's not getting an access pass error. She's getting a security error. Because for that app, she does not have, section access has not allowed her to get to any of the data in that app. And so that is exactly what I would expect. She could get the app open. She does have an access pass that we'll see. She can't get there because of rural security within the application itself. If I go ahead and come back to here, let me refresh my screen. And what we see is we've got two login accesses now used as well as a user access. If I look at my users, you'll see it is now granted the, the user access pass for six. And if I look at the user, the login access, you'll see that I've used a login pass out of my fifth, out of my 500, and I've used one for the finance user. Let's go ahead and do a couple more just so that you can see um, how that works. I'm going to go ahead and log in as executive. I'm going to get into an application. I'm going to log out if we come back to here and I refresh the screen. We'll see that I've now used two access passes for the finance groups. And so through this, you can then define how many of your tokens. You don't just have to say everybody gets the same pool if you want to limit the pools. Um, so if you've got license sharing, and the clinical team has, has given money for 50 tokens and the finance team has only given 10, you can indeed lock those down and based on the groups that you've defined in your active directory, in this case it was my little iPortal thing locally, um, will be granted access to the right pools. One of the nice things is if you're not sure about groups, once it's brought users in, it will show you the groups that people are part of, whatever those AD groups may be, um, or in this case, what groups I've defined as part of my iPortal. Um, so you can see the groups and then you decide, do I want to grant them a user pass? Um, do I want to manually, do I want to put them in um, some rules that could grant access? And there could be multiples of those rules. Or do I want to give them a login pass that's going to be from some shared pool out of my entire sets of tokens. And the beautiful thing as always is we can then track these things, see what's available, what's being used, etc. So um, we know at this point that we've allocated 60 total tokens and we've used five of those passes. Three that we used and two that were quarantined because they had been used and then I reset everything in order to make this video. Hope that's helpful to you.